Good day, friends. It is me, HL Mod Tech, and I am back with another awesome Tinkercad laser project. So let's get cracking. Friends, today I'm going to teach you how to build this awesome little 6mm ball maze. Now, when you ask what 6mm, you can use a regular BB or an airsoft pellet. Friends, you put it at this end and you simply have to tilt and navigate to try and get it to the other side and get a win. Friends, let me show you how to make it. All right, friends, of course, step one is to launch Tinkercad. Of course, once we're in Tinkercad, we are going to create a new 3D design. The first thing we're going to do is name it. We're going to call this Ball Maze. I'm going to backspace B-A-L-L-M-A-Z-E, and then please put your name or your initials, so that way it's easier for your teacher to keep track of. I've done more than one of these, so I'm going to call this V2. Remember, if you pull down, you get the numbers, which is pretty darn sweet. We're going to change our settings. I'm going to set this for a laser cutter in millimeters. I need to take this width, and instead of 200, I need to make it 280. So I'm just going to click on that side, back up, pull down for the 8, pull down for the 0. And then if you click out here and click out here, it becomes permanent. Now the first thing we're going to do is type a fancy shape called soft in the search box. The soft box will show up and we need to pull it out. It is super handy so I highly recommend you click in the little star so it will be a favorite. We're going to click on the ground and we're going to zoom in and we're going to change its measurements. I'm going to hide the little soft box menu and then I'm going to drop down the soft box measurements. We are going to put in the number 70. Once again, it's already selected. You can backspace if you want, but we pull down for the seven, we pull down for the zero. When you click over there, it automatically happens. This one, we're gonna backspace as well, and we're gonna make it 90. The reason I chose these measurements is because they fit the laser that I'm using and the project that we're using. Now we're gonna work with four millimeter cardboard. So backspace and pull down the four so that that looks like cardboard. And then we're gonna make the walls six. Notice if you don't drag down, it doesn't do a six. Leave the outer radius just the way it was. I'm going to move it back to this corner and I'm going to set it down. I'm going to use it again by hitting duplicate. I want to move it to the side. And these are going to be the rails that hold our cool little marbles or the ball in place. This one's going to be the bottom of the project. The only change we need to do is make the wall crazy large. Notice if you get anywhere above 40, it fills in, which is perfect. We are going to make it the color blue, just so we can tell which is which. Now, friends, we need to make the middle row, and we're going to do that by simply clicking on this one and doing duplicate. And then we need to cut a chunk out of it. So I'm going to pull it down to the bottom. Notice if you don't get it the first time, just try, try again. I'm going to align it as close as I can. Later, I'll get it perfect. And like I said, we're going to cut a piece out of it. So bring out the whole box. Friends, I'm going to select both those by clicking one, clicking the modifier, clicking the second. Notice it says there are two shapes selected. So we're going to click on the align tool. And then we want to align them this way. Notice it does take practice to get good at hitting those. Once again, we want to align them to the middle with that dot right there. And then I also want to put them to the back. So I'm going to hit that dot over there. Notice sometimes looking at it from an angle makes it easier to hit the dot. Notice this one did not kick in, so I'm going to do it one more time. It does have... Sometimes you do have to try, try again, but let's see if I can get it one more time. Bingo! That's what I wanted, and friends, now we got to group it. So what that is, is the layer that we're going to put in the middle so that when the ball falls through for our game, we'll be able to get the ball out and play again. So click somewhere else, make sure you only have that one. Let's hit duplicate, and let's bring the new top one down. I'm going to set it right there. Just so I can tell that this is the top, I'm going to make it green. That makes it easier when we're talking about it. It really doesn't change anything, though. And friends, we are going to cut some shapes out of this bring out the hole the circle hole i want to click fit view to zoom in on that hole when we click the hole i want to make it so it's really really round then i'm going to hide that and i'm going to shrink it 
All right, friends, so we're gonna use the cool shift modifier to make this the right size. There I made it grow and then click on the box and when you backspace and type, whatever size you put, and I'm gonna tell you the size we want is 10, it all snaps to that size. So this is gonna be the piece we cut out for our fun little ball maze. Just to make this make more sense, let's click on this shape here and do duplicate. I'm gonna bring it across. I'm gonna just get that close so you can see how it's gonna line up. That's actually pretty perfect. And then this will be where the game ends. So I am gonna click on the green one and I'm gonna lock it. That way it can't move. I'm gonna click on the yellow one and I'm gonna lock it too. So I can still see those two pieces as I arrange all my parts. So that's where the game ends. Well, I wanna add a couple more holes. So I'm gonna hit duplicate and I'm gonna pull that one over here. I'm gonna hit duplicate again. Notice this one moves because it memorized that movement. I'm gonna put it there. I'm gonna go back and grab this one again. Remember, if you ever make a mistake, you can just undo. It had just memorized that I had two shapes selected. And I'm gonna put this one right here. Now notice that one went the wrong way, so I'm gonna delete it. I grabbed one of the handles instead of the shape. And I'm gonna put this right here. Now we can add different shapes for holes too. I'm gonna bring out the whole box. Once again, I'm gonna hold that shift modifier and I'm gonna stretch it to Crazyville. Instead of 34, I'm gonna type 10. 10 is a great size because we are gonna use a six millimeter marble. And then remember, because I got this locked, it doesn't move, which is awesome. I can drag that wherever it is I want. And then friends, I'm also gonna bring out the cool roof. Now once again, fit view to zoom in on that roof. I'm gonna do minus to zoom a couple back. I'm gonna look at it from a corner and this is the rotation handle. Friends, watch this. If you rotate with the shift modifier, it goes 45 degrees at a time. It's super slick. Now I'm gonna hold down shift and I'm gonna shrink that a little bit. Notice I did not measure this one to any special size. You can have fun with that and adjust it however you want. I'm gonna have fun with it and just put it where I want. You can also rotate it, stretch it, whatever you want. Just make sure that it is gonna cut through. So all of my parts are in place. I can do one final adjustment, but now I wanna add a couple walls. Well, we're gonna make holes where the walls can be glued in. Our walls are all gonna have special measurements. Once again, let's hit fit view. And I'm gonna tell you that when we click on this hole, we need to make this corner four. So backspace, drag down, there's your four, because that's how thick our cardboard is. Now in this direction, I'm gonna tell you we're gonna make it 10. Drag down, drag down, tell it okay. And then the hole can really be any height, but this height is kind of silly. So I'm gonna change it to eight, just so it's easy to move, but it really doesn't matter because we're just gonna cut these out. So I'm pinching and stretching, and I want to put a wall over here to protect the ball. I'm going to click on our duplicate button, zoom in a little. Let's see if I can get so I can see that. And bingo, I'm putting a wall right here, making sure that there's room for the little tab. I'm also going to put a wall up here. So I'm going to click on this, making sure I only have one. For a moment there, there were two. And I'm going to put this one. Let's grab it and drag it. I'm gonna put it up that way, but I wanna rotate it 90 degrees. Now I gotta get exactly 90 because I want that one straight. So I am gonna do, I was gonna type negative 90, but I accidentally got it. So now I'm gonna move these so that this is gonna protect that area. And then I can get these arranged so that they look pretty cool. I'm gonna add one more wall just for fun. I'm gonna just bring this one in here and this time, I'm gonna hold that shift and I only wanna go 45 degrees. So that wall will be at a crazy angle. Just confirming this maze is gonna start down here and then you're gonna try and get it through all those holes and get it into the right spot. So friends, we're gonna click on the green one and we're gonna unlock it. And now I want you to double click drag to get all those pieces. So you can see there's three, six, seven, eight, nine. The green would be 10, the yellow would be 11. But watch this, when I group it, the yellow one doesn't really group. So that's why there are two shapes left. 
So we're going to ungroup the yellow one and we're going to move these to different spots. I'm going to put this one right up beside there, nice and close. I'm going to move this one out here so we've got it. And then friends, we need a duplicate of this. So once again, we are going to hit duplicate. And then I'm going to drag it across so that they are ready. All right, friends, we need to get these lined up pretty easily. And I've got a strategy that's pretty darn slick. Find the ruler tool and bring it out. Zoom in so you can see really, really well. I'm going to pinch and move. And then I'm going to just grab and drag it to that line. So bingo, that's pretty slick right there. I'm actually going to go up one. So now I can drag this up right to that line. It snaps almost instantly. It's so cool. Pinch to come across. Let's switch shapes. Notice we can bring it up. Accidentally we had two shapes, so I'm going to undo that. Click somewhere else. Now I've just got the one. Let's see if the ruler's still there. Yes, it is. And then we can just drag it right up so it's lined up with the ruler. How cool is that? Making sure they aren't touching this way either. Let's zoom out. And now even from a distance, I can switch. Make sure you've got none, then one. And bingo, we can move it up so that it's in line. You can see that line moving with it. It's so slick. I'm going to zoom in on my ruler again. And now I'm going to move the ruler for the other part. So I just moved it up a couple because we do want them close. Then we can click somewhere else, click the shape, and bingo, line them right up with those corners. It's so slick. It's so fast. And you can even see the line up there as you get them arranged. Bingo. How cool is that? All lined up. One very simple step. You could line them up, up and down, but it isn't that essential. Alrighty, friends, for our next part, we're going to use something cool. We're going to bring out the ruler for the first time. Get it right to one of those corner lines. You can move it around till you get it right on the edge of a grid mark. Now, this is going to be so cool because we can bring out a rectangle and it snaps right to that spot. Now, I'm going to grab this little black handle here and see on the left where it's telling me the numbers. I want to get that so it says 4. So I'm just dragging it till it says 4. I could also type the number. I'm going to make this number 15 so I can backspace. And I'm going to drag down the 1. I'm going to drag down the 5. Notice if you miss, just back up and retry. And then we need the height to be 12. So I am just dragging the handle. That's how slick that is. Now we're going to subtract 5 from this. So we'll have a 10 millimeter nub underneath. So we're going to simply bring out the cube, and then we can set it right on that corner. Notice it snaps nice and handy dandy. If you accidentally move it, you can nudge it, and then I'm going to just change its measurements. I know I want that to be 5, and I know I want the height to be 4. Backspace, 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 and 4 until it OK. I do not mind that it's sticking out a long ways. I'm going to get rid of my ruler by clicking on that tiny X. Notice you can zoom in so you can get a better look at the X. And then we need to group these by click, click, and group. Friends, that is the awesome part that we're going to plug into that hole right there. Now we need to lay it down for laser cutting. Once again, I'm going to find the angle, find that corner, and I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. Friends, it is really important that we get it down to zero. So there, I'm just double checking my work plane. I'm going to lift it up crazy high, but then since I want this to be zero, I'm going to backspace and I'm going to type zero so that it is really truly on the bottom. I'm going to nudge this one into place over here. Remember, if you make a mistake, simply try, try again. We need to make three of those. So I have got it inside one of my shapes. I'm going to hit duplicate so there are two of them. Let's zoom in so I can see better. Also, if I click somewhere else, it's easier to grab that first time. Let's duplicate again. Bingo. Click somewhere else, and then it just lets me grab and place my parts. 
friends oh my gosh you have just made your own cool game now it is ready to send it to your teacher for laser cutting now there are two ways that this could work the first way would be you're sending all your parts to your teacher and when you do that you would be doing export and you're doing all the shapes and you're doing the SVG you could send that in an email classroom whichever whichever way you need to get it to your teacher I'm gonna choose save mine to files so that way I've got it I'm gonna put it in my Tinkercad folder and I'm gonna hit save and you need to get that to your teacher now the other way we could do it is if your teacher already cut all of these parts because they're the same for everybody the only one you need is this shape right here so click this single shape choose export and then you want to export that selected shape as an SVG I'm still gonna put it in Tinkercad. Let's see if it puts a 2A after it when we hit save. Notice it says replace. I do not want to, I wanna keep both items. So this one will have a version two after it or something similar. So everybody, hopefully you had a ton of fun designing that and I'm looking forward to seeing the results after you laser cut and assemble them. I will make a second video that shows how to assemble it. It is pretty simple, but I'll of course make that video just in case. Finally friends, don't forget if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Please also hit that share button so more people can learn about HL Mod Tech. Don't forget you absolutely make my day if you take time to add a comment down below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button. And last but not least, hit that notification bell if you want to be the first to know when there's a brand new video from me, HL Mod Tech. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.